Hello and welcome to the Peluso Presents Podcast. My name is Mike Peluso. I am your host. And this is episode number 115 for the week of July 8th, 2019. I should say a very hot week of July 8th because we just came off the 4th of July holiday and it's 100 plus degrees here in North Carolina. And you know what else is hot today? We have a hot topic with all props to the store in the mall. And that topic is all about AI displacement and preparing for what's eventually going to happen to anybody in the professional class. Because ultimately what happened is that we lived in this world where easily replicatable, if that's a word, tasks that are automated, that are the same thing over and over and over again, those things have been automated to the point where most industrial facilities, most manufacturing facilities have machines and the machines come in and they do the work. And now we don't have people who box things for the most part. We don't have people who hit the lever to turn the machine on to press the the deal. We have people who are operating the machine. The machine's doing the work and the people are operating the machine and they're feeding the machine and they're making sure that the product is coming off the machine and they're fixing any issues throughout the production process. That's what's happening. That's automation. It's been going on for 20, 30, 40 years now. Well, now with artificial intelligence, now with this machine learning world, all of a sudden, tasks that used to be the purview of the professional class, of the individual contributor, human resources, investment advice, banking, even healthcare, basically everything that can be automated with intelligence behind it now is being automated. And so you have to sort of ask yourself, wow, if the odds are that my job is going to go away through displacement, through AI displacement, how am I going to deal with this? And that's the topic of today's post of the week. How do you handle this AI displacement thing? I think that's about all we're going to do this week because I was going to have a conversational chaos with Aldo and his buddy, but they are literally tromping around the river, probably getting eaten by water moccasins and alligator gar and all sorts of other fish. Fortunately, don't, for anybody who's listening to this, don't freak out. The river's about a foot and a half deep in my backyard. So the biggest real issue we have to worry about is how covered in mud they're going to be when they come back in. Nobody's going to drown in that river. And I'm pretty sure that any critters in that river are going to be more scared of the boys than the boys are going to be attacked by the critters. As far as all of you who would like an update on the book, I ran into some problems with my editors. I have not gotten back the draft from my initial editors. I feel like I haven't done anything there. I have learned a fair amount about the proposal that I have to put together, and I'm in the process of doing that now. So that's kind of where we are. Very, very slow progress, much slower than I thought I would have. That's been a struggle, but it's not unheard of. And on that note, let's get on with the rest of the show. How to Plan for AI Displacement I was at a meeting recently. It was your classic round-robin of office supervisors all reporting out to one of the rare higher-level managers. Typical of these meetings, to make sure everybody was on the same page, the senior manager went over a bunch of news items of interest to the local area supervisors. One of the news items that caught my attention immediately was about a new software update that would allow customers to do a chunk of the work themselves online that used to be done by staff in the individual offices. I felt a strong sense of irony because I knew that this particular agency was under pressure to cut costs. This new software package would absolutely mean displacement of office workers either through attrition or realignment of resources, i.e. layoffs. The ironic element was simply that part of the mission of this agency was to give people skills to get and keep jobs. This was one small example of something that I keep seeing again and again with conversations in and around workforce development. In a nutshell, artificial intelligence or AI is becoming so prevalent 
that it's going to disrupt many industries and many people will lose their jobs to the continual evolution of computer networks that are always learning from crowdsourced knowledge. As an individual who is formally trained in and highly aware of technology, I know this isn't another doom and gloom prediction. It's not just tech CEOs talking about universal socialized payment programs or self-driving vehicles as these are just the marquee indicators. It's everywhere. When I look at the news coming out of Silicon Valley, sometimes I feel like every single penny of venture capital is going right to furthering the development of professional level job destroying technology. So option one for me is something that I have done for a while, which is put on my Luddite shirt and scream, Danger, Will Robinson, danger! The challenge here is that this is going to be a lot like everything else on the hype cycle. We are going to overthink the short-term impact, but underthink the real long-term change to society and the working professional class. The hype cycle is a well-known tech investment theory that originated several years ago. The technology in the cycle is updated annually by Gartner, the American research, advisory, and information technology firm which created it. The theory describes a hype bubble that encompasses interest and investment in almost all new technologies. It also offers a fantastic visualization of how we aggregately are considering the current technologies in development that will affect our lives. Artificial intelligence has been around forever, and only now is it starting to creep up the plateau of productivity. It's still early days yet, but the technorati are definitely figuring out how to drive operational efficiencies by using AI. Like all technology over the last decade, I suspect that the development of AI will destroy more jobs than it creates. So what do you do? Figuring out what to do is tough. What makes it so difficult is that you can't really predict what's going to happen. Well, when I say you can't predict, you can't predict broadly, but I do feel that people who are very niche-oriented in their career can probably see some specific areas ripe for disruption. As an example, anybody who took an honest look at the taxi industry as it stood before Uber would have called it a racket. You may not have known how it would have been disrupted, but I could believe that many people working within that industry would have looked at it and said something is going to happen to change all this. It's that feeling that something is just wrong with the way everything is structured and needs to change sooner rather than later that is a really good indicator of impending tech disruption. This is why the two tentpole industries of healthcare and education seem like areas of intense opportunity for massive disruption to me. This disruption will definitely include artificial intelligence. As I said, it's hard to know exactly what to do if you see a potential for disruption. For example, if I was successful in the taxi business but was worried about a disruption in my business, I probably would have focused my energies on building the auto maintenance and repair side of my organization. I'd give up the high dollar taxi cab rentals and fares and specialize on keeping vehicles on the road for those who are scraping by under the new Uber and Lyft paradigm. Since we don't really know how we're going to get disrupted in any industry, the strategies we keep in reserve all have to be a bit broad. The one commonality is that if you have a single source of expertise or revenue in an industry ripe for disruption, then I would be worried and starting to consider options. One strategy is the classic, if you can't beat them, join them. Since AI will be the disruptor, you can go get some training in computer science and add it to whatever it is you do and go join a company that's trying to do the displacing. This is kind of a big commitment because it may require a move and a huge gamble vis-a-vis an expensive investment in more education. When I say may... I really mean it absolutely will require all of those things and many other sacrifices. The one guarantee with this approach is that you will be uncomfortable. You will have to leave the familiar, learn difficult things to understand, take on large amounts of risk, and put everything else in your life on hold for a huge amount of time. This is like trying to turn an ocean liner. It takes a ton of effort, but once you get going... You'll start sailing in the other direction and it'll be hard to get knocked off your new course. Personally, I'd do it if I wasn't so risk averse. I know how in demand good artificial intelligent experts are. 
Like the vast majority of the workforce, I just don't have the desire to go back to school for four to six years and then start at the bottom again. Then again, that's why the supply of AI experts is so low. If the IT companies would pay me my current salary and benefits for the period of time it took to get up to speed, I would absolutely go back to school and become an AI programmer or project manager in a heartbeat. You could do the equivalent of, stop this ship, I want to get off, i.e. you could give up and go teach yourself a trade like plumbing or electrical. These jobs are in high demand right now. They pay very well and it may be worth it if you're on the lower end of the professional class. If you're making 40 a year and don't mind taking a hit financially for a couple of years and doing things like crawling under houses, after two years of apprenticing in one of these trades, you'll get a 50% bump in pay or more. The best part is I don't foresee artificial intelligence affecting plumbers all that much. There is the damn the torpedoes full steam ahead approach, i.e. just do nothing. You can hang around your chosen field and just hope to be one of the ones who gets lucky enough to survive. If disruption happens to you, you'll have to roll with the punches until a retraining or a career option you like comes along. I believe the right strategy for the full steam ahead approach includes playing a combination of financial offense and defense. Live like a pauper, but work 80 hours a week as if you were aspiring to be a senior executive one day. I suspect the workaholics and broadly skilled will be the ones who don't get let go until the end. You can also try and anchor yourself to your job and industry approach. That will help quite a bit. This is somewhat analogous to the approach I have taken. I put in long hours and I learn as much as I can. It's also the best strategy if you're close to the end of your career and have a great retirement plan. So 3% of you can do this. There is one universal strategy that everyone should follow, and that is the strategy of knowledge. You can't really prepare or decide on what to do next unless you have intense awareness of what is going on in your professional world. At the very least, understand what the artificial intelligence and automation tools are in your industry. Go to the conferences, search the job boards, look at what vendors are suggesting, It may seem insane or pie in the sky, but if somebody said, I'm going to turn every house into a bed and breakfast before Airbnb came on the scene, or I'm going to take anyone who needs a ride and allow them to feel safe getting in a stranger's personal car before Uber exploded in popularity, we would have thought they were nuts. One easy way to start thinking about it is to ask yourself the following questions. What decisions do you make that a computer can eventually make? Artificial intelligence is all about decision making. That's why the mechanical aspects of the trades are safer than the decision making professional class jobs. Do you make decisions about numbers or people? Computers make those decisions very well these days. If a computer made those decisions, then what would you do? If you can figure that out, you'll set the right course that brings you to smooth sailing while everyone else around you still has to navigate the AI storm. We hope you enjoyed this episode of the Peluso Presents podcast. You can follow the Peluso Presents efforts via Twitter, at Peluso Presents, on Facebook, on Medium.com, just search for Mike Peluso, on LinkedIn, and of course, on the blog located at www.pelusopresents.com. You can email us directly via Peluso at Outlook.com. This podcast is available on all major podcast services, including iTunes, Google Play Music, or your podcast service of choice. We love and appreciate any comments and reviews you wish to leave. Please remember to support this effort by sharing and liking the postings on all your social media. If you'd like to support this effort more directly, you can via patreon.com forward slash Palooza Presents. Thank you for listening, following, sharing, and for your support. We appreciate it.